Hey you guys, I just wanted to start off today's video with this quick little note to let you know that we will be spending about the next 10 minutes or so talking about a theory that I have for the creation of Dementors. We all know that J.K. Rowling came up with the idea for Dementors. It was in, born out of her struggles with depression, so I just wanted to give this quick heads up for anyone who may be dealing with depression or other mental health challenges out there. I will be talking about the creation of Dementors in a very literal sense within the wizarding world, so I don't intend for any of today's discussion to be representative of depression or other mental health challenges. Uh, but for any of you who may struggle with those kinds of things, if at any point in today's video you feel triggered by something that I've said, please feel free, of course, to skip ahead or uh, stop the video if you feel like you need to and know that I deeply apologize if anything that I say makes you feel that way. Now let's jump into it. Happy Tuesday, Potterheads! Today we're talking about Chapter 17 of Chamber of Secrets and how I may have figured out how Dementors are born! But first, let's go to the recap. Harry enters the chamber and sees Ginny lying on the floor. He worries that she's dead, but Tom Riddle appears and says she's still alive. Riddle takes Harry's wand and Harry begs him to help, but Tom won't. Instead, Riddle explains how Ginny poured so much of herself into the diary that it strengthened him enough to leave its pages. Then he says Ginny told him all about Harry and he's decided to kill Harry instead of Muggleborns. Then he reveals that his name, Tom Marvola Riddle, rearranges his spell I am Lord Voldemort. Harry shows loyalty to Dumbledore and Fox shows up holding the sorting hat. Riddle summons the basilisk and Harry tries to run away with his eyes closed. Fox blinds the basilisk and the sorting hat gives Harry a sword. The basilisk lunges at Harry a few times until Harry stabs the basilisk through the mouth, but Harry also gets stabbed by one of its fangs. Harry thinks he's going to die, but Fox cures Harry's wounds with tears. Then Fox brings Harry the diary and Harry stabs it with the basilisk fang and Riddle vanishes. Ginny wakes up and they escape the chamber and find Ron and Lockhart. They grab onto Fox's tail feathers and fly out of the chamber. They land in Riddle's bathroom and she's disappointed Harry isn't dead because she wanted him to share her toilet. Thanks recap, if this is your very first book club video, welcome. This one is gonna be a doozy, but thank you for joining us. If you like the video at the end, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and if you're new and wanna follow along, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. And if you wanna start all the way back from the beginning of book one, you can click that card in the top left right there. Okay, let's launch right into this one. Yes, I think I've got an idea for how a Dementor is created, or at least one way it could happen. But Kevin, why are you talking about Dementors? This is Chamber of Secrets, not Prisoner of Azkaban. Well, Kevin, that's stands closer to the bookshelves, we all know that I love to take one tiny little part of a chapter and expand it out into a discussion that is extremely loosely related to the chapter. You know, like the diary being a pensieve, or house elves not actually being magically enslaved, that kind of stuff. Watch the videos at the top left in the card. And today, that's exactly what we're doing. Okay, so the passage that planted this seed of an idea, a uh, gross thing to say in a video about Dementor breeding, the passage that got me thinking about all this. Oh god, I just have to get it out. No, I'm not going to talk about any sweet, sweet Dementor lovin', okay? Oh jeez, alright, now I can move on. There's one specific way that Tom Riddle talks about how he has gotten stronger that sounded oddly familiar to me. He says that he grew stronger on a diet of her deepest fears, of her darkest secrets. Here's the note that I wrote while I was reading the chapter. So, I'll pose the question to you guys. Dementor? No, I'm not asking you if you think that Tom Riddle is a Dementor himself, or if that's what the diet has become. But first, let's go over some facts about Dementors. Direct from Pottermore here. Shaped like humans covered in dark hooded cloaks, their skin resembles that of a gray rotting body. Though they are blind, they can sense and feed on positive feelings, draining their victims' happiness. Lupin explains in Prisoner of Azkaban, Dementors are among the foulest creatures that walk this earth. They infest the darkest, filthiest places. They glory in decay and despair. They drain peace, hope, and happiness out of the air around them. Get too near a Dementor, and every good feeling, every happy memory will be sucked out of you. If it can, the Dementor will feed on you long enough to reduce you to something like itself. Soulless and evil. You will be left with nothing but the worst experiences of your life. Okay, and then you bring in this one quick Pottermore description about Patronuses. As a pure protective magical concentration of happiness and hope, the recollection of a single talisman memory is essential in its creation, it is the only spell effective against Dementors. So, what is the connection that I am making with all this? Well, it has to do with Horcruxes. The thread from these three things that I've just read to you is memory. We all know that Dementors eat your happiness. Lupin explicitly states that a Dementor can suck every happy memory out of you. And the Section on Patronuses, in one way, makes it sound like a Patronus is just a deep, deep, happy memory that gets projected out into the world. And what else gets described as a memory in all of this? Oh god, what is it? Oh, that's right! Shoot, shoot, get away! 
Okay, so that is just the initial thread of this idea that I have. Now let's get into some of the intense research. And I'll just go ahead and say fair warning that this theory is far more convoluted than my the diary wasn't originally a horcrux slash how to create a horcrux theory. As far as I can tell, Dementors have existed basically as long as wizards have, but the earliest information that we have comes along with the history of Azkaban prison. A Chrysdis... Echristus? Echristus. Whatever. Echristus was a dark wizard who lived in the 1400s and was the original and sole inhabitant of Azkaban Fortress. He lived on the island all by himself and was said to have practiced the darkest magic possible there and lured and tortured and killed muggle sailors that passed by. After Echristus's death, the concealment charms that he had placed on the island disappeared. So the ministry finally knew that it was there and they investigated. And this is direct from Pottermore again. Those who entered to investigate refused afterwards to talk of what they had found inside, but the least frightening part of it was that the place was infested with Dementors. Okay, so the place where we have the most information about the history of Dementors is also the place where a super dark wizard was murdering a lot of people and practicing the darkest magic. Hmm, and what do we know from later in the series is the darkest magic that anyone can produce? What is the creation of a horcrux? But that really still doesn't tell us much. I mean, at this point, it's still just an idea. Spoiler alert, it doesn't get any better. <laughs> Here's the idea I had after doing this part of the research. Maybe Acrisdus was all alone on this island because he was trying to figure out how to make horcruxes, and that's why he was luring a lot of muggle sailors to the island to kill them and make horcruxes. But maybe he kept failing at it. J.K. Rowling has said that failing at creating a horcrux can be catastrophic. So where I was after reading all this was basically that. One way that a Dementor could be born was by failing to make a horcrux. Let's do more research. Okay, so then I went on to do more research about Dementors themselves, and one thing that we all know about Dementors is the Dementors kiss. Basically, Dementor locks lips with you, sucks your soul out through your mouth, and leaves your body behind, an empty shell. And everything I read kept describing it as a permanent vegetative state, Lupin calls it a fate worse than death, and describes it as living but not really alive. And this sounds pretty close to what Ginny is becoming when Harry enters the chamber. Tom Riddle talks about how Ginny was pouring her soul into the diary and how he was feeding off of it to get stronger. And then when Harry asks Tom to help Ginny, Tom says that she's alive, but just barely. Now the one thing that Dementors and Horcruxes have most in common is that it's the one area where the series talks the most about a person's soul. Dementors are constantly looking to feed off of people's souls, and Horcruxes are a way to hide a part of your soul. Having your soul sucked out apparently makes you barely even human, and splitting your soul by creating a horcrux reduces your humanness apparently as well. If you get your soul sucked out even when your body dies, you can't move on to the afterlife. And if you die without rejoining all the fragments of your soul from your horcruxes, you're stuck in limbo and can't move on to the afterlife. So the parallels are definitely there between Dementors and horcruxes, and this continues to seem to support the idea that a failed attempt at creating a horcrux might be a way that a Dementor is created. And here's where my theorizing comes into play. So here's one thing I have semi-concluded. I think that one way a Dementor may be created is it happens in between when you have taken the fragment of your soul out of your body and before you have placed it inside of your intended container. Somewhere in there you've failed at performing the Horcrux spell correctly and so your soul doesn't make it to the container and is left to just kind of flit out in the world by itself. But Kevin, Voldemort's soul was able to attach onto something for itself. Ah, yes, good point, but I think there is a difference here. If we're talking about the soul fragment that latched onto Harry, that soul fragment had an opening to go through. The scar on Harry's forehead was the only mark left by the killing curse, a curse that doesn't normally leave a mark. And that's where that fragment of soul entered into Harry's body. And J.K. Rowling has been adamant in recent years that Harry is not a horcrux. She has been adamant that there has to be intentionality involved, and that every single step has to be completed perfectly. Voldemort's situation is unique. He had just killed two people right before trying to kill Harry, so his soul had a little extra fragmentation going on. And his killing curse is so strong that when it rebounds, it completely destroys his body, and his main soul and that little bit of fragment are able to escape. The main soul becomes non-corporeal, as it does if you die while you have horcruxes, and it is able to 
inhabit others and control them. The fragment takes up residence in Harry in order to survive, but the important thing is that it is never able to control or communicate with Harry like Voldemort can with Quirrell or Tom Riddle can with Ginny. You know, the properly handled soul pieces. So I think this point almost stands as even more evidence for my theory. Without the wound on Harry's head to go through, the soul fragment would have been lost and on its own. And I think that when a fragment of soul is lost, somehow, some way, it starts to become corrupted and eventually becomes a Dementor. It becomes humanoid in shape because that's all the soul has ever known what to look like. But of course it doesn't get it right because it's not an entire whole human soul. And that piece of soul that became a Dementor is in agony. It is in constant search for positivity and happiness to feed on to give it life. And if it can make it happen, it is searching for any and every other piece of soul that it can find to join with it and to try to make it whole again. But the spell to create a horcrux must somehow make that soul fragment more pure and closer to being whole, at least more so than a failed horcrux. And maybe that's how that piece of Tom Riddle is almost able to come back entirely. Because it is a well-crafted extra soul that is able to feed off of a pure, clean, unfragmented soul via Ginny. My last piece of evidence that I'll go into that is even farther away from Chamber of Secrets is this book. The Tales of Beetle the Bard, more specifically the story The Warlock's Hairy Heart. For those who haven't read it, there's this wizard who wants nothing to do with emotions, thinks that it's a weakness, and so he doesn't want anything to do with love or marriage or parenting. He's rich and young and handsome, but his servants make fun of him for not being able to attract a wife. So one day he sets out to find a wife and the perfect candidate shows up. He wins her over with poetry stolen from someone else, but she sees that he is untrue and says that she would believe him if only she believed that he actually had a heart. So he takes her down to his dungeon and shows her that he does indeed have a heart. In fact, that he removed his own heart from his own body and keeps it in a glass case. And now he keeps it still beating in that case in his dungeon so as not to fall prey to emotion. The woman is appalled and urges him to put it back in his body. But his heart had become disconnected from his body for so long that it had become shriveled and black and hairy. And when he returned his heart to his body, his heart forced him to lunge at the woman and cut out her heart for his own. The hairy heart was hungry for a pure, clean, perfect heart. Determined not to be controlled by his own heart, the warlock kills himself. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but the hairy heart kind of sounds like a Dementor situation to me. And that is it for today's topic and for today's video, actually. Like I told you guys, this was not my best well thought out theory, but I am pretty fond of it. So please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts. Do you think that one way a Dementor could be born is from a failed Horcrux? And I just want to say, I don't think this is the only way that Dementors are born. Obviously, you know, when they're all in one area and they have a lot to feed off of, they can kind of multiply in some weird way, and I'm not going to get into that. But let me know what you guys think about what we've talked about in the video today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like what I'm doing and want to follow along, please subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a single episode as we reread the Harry Potter series. And please share this video with everyone you know. Also, also, if you are so inclined, please consider visiting my Patreon. I don't want you guys to feel like I'm pushing this on you, but I really, really would love to improve for you guys. So if you're so inclined and able, please visit the link in the description. You can also check out my merchandise, which is also in the description below. Click the top link to see me talk about why McGonagall is the best, or click the bottom link to see me unbox the September Accio box. Your assignment for next week is chapter 18. That is Dobby's Reward, the last chapter. So make sure you guys read that by next Tuesday. Until then, happy reading, Knox!